Building a portfolio full of high yielding ETFs is the perfect option for the dividend investors out there that aren't necessarily super concerned about growth potential long term, but are concerned about cash flow and and investing into income generating assets from day one. Now in this video, we're going to go through what I would consider almost the perfect or as close to perfect as possible dividend portfolio made up of three different high yielding dividend ETFs. Now, just a word of caution, because these three different ETFs are what I would consider to be higher yielding, they are going to offer a lot more cash flow potential, but aren't necessarily going to grow as fast as some other assets across the market. Now, if you're interested in higher yielding assets and want to see what I think would make the perfect high yield dividend portfolio, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get into the first ETF. Now, the first high yielding ETF that I would consider in my high yield portfolio, if I could only choose three different ETFs, would be an ETF that I already personally own hundreds of shares of. I'm talking about the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF or JEPQ. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there probably are familiar with JEPQ, and JEPQ, although not necessarily as popular as JEPQ, has a lot of similarities to JEPQ, but offers some things that JEPQ doesn't. Now, quick overview on JEPQ, it says designed to provide current income while maintaining prospects for capital appreciation. Generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in U.S. large cap growth stocks, seeking to deliver monthly income streams from associated option premiums. Also, it says seeks to deliver a significant portion of returns associated with the NASDAQ 100 index with less volatility. So JEPQ's objective is pretty simple. It's basically a covered call ETF that buys into a basket of holdings and then sells covered calls on a portion of it. Now, some more details on JEPQ and why this ETF is in my portfolio currently and why I would consider this one of my favorite higher yielding ETFs. JEPQ's performance has been incredible year to date, up 20.73%, and that's not even including dividends. JEPQ has been leading the pack as far as covered call ETFs so far this year, and I honestly cannot complain. Now, JEPQ's expense ratio is sort of pricey at around 0.35%, but keep in mind with covered call funds like this, that's sort of industry standard. JEPQ also pays a dividend monthly, which is awesome, especially for those investors that are probably watching this video that are interested in getting income and getting it fast. Now, JEPQ is currently trading at around $49 or $50 per share as of filming this video, and like I said a second ago, it has done pretty well overall because of the holdings within this ETF. Now, speaking of holdings, the holding breakdown for JEPQ is one of my favorite parts of this ETF. Technology is 50% plus of the ETF, which means this ETF is going to have a little bit higher beta than some other funds out there. The next biggest portions are going to be made up of communication, consumer cyclical, healthcare, consumer defensive, and then a small portion of things like industrials, utilities, financials, energy, and real estate. Now, some of the top holdings for JEPQ are things like Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, NVIDIA. All in all, around 91 different holdings which make up JEPQ. And with these holdings and, of course, with the cover call overlay, this ETF definitely pays what I would consider a decent dividend, somewhere around 10 or 11% dividend yield trailing 12 months. And looking a little bit closer into JEPQ's dividend payouts over the last year or so, there was a time back in 2022 where pretty much all the covered call ETFs were paying a little bit more in dividends because of things like volatility, etc. And as of recently, although JEPQ's dividends have been around 42 cents or so per share per month, and although that's not necessarily as much as some investors like myself would wish it'd be paying, because there was times where JEPQ was paying around 68 cents on a monthly basis. It's still all in all not that bad, and especially because JEPQ's growth potential has been very very, very good, at least so far this year, I'm honestly not complaining. The next extremely high yielding ETF that I would consider in my portfolio if I was looking to build a higher yielding portfolio would be the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF or SVOL. Now, SVOL has a pretty interesting strategy. It says a Simplified Volatility Premium ETF or SVOL seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to approximately one fifth to three tenths of the inverse of the performance of the CBOE Volatility Index or VIX. And although SVOL is what I would consider personally more of an alternative investment, meaning that it's not necessarily something that I would make up the majority of my portfolio with, it actually has found a spot in my portfolio, and honestly, I'm up quite a bit in it right now, and I still have been buying some shares of SVOL pretty consistently on a weekly basis. But looking at SVOL's performance on the max time frame, it is down around 10%, but hold up, they do pay a massive dividend, or at least it has historically, so even though the ETF price is down, the dividend's definitely made up for it. Now, year-to-date performance, SVOL is actually up 5%. But some more facts on SVOL, the expense ratio is massive for this ETF, a 1.16% expense ratio. 
which once again, because this is more of an actively managed, more hands-on ETF, you really cannot compare the expense ratios to things like SCHD or even VU. It's two totally different things. And because this ETF has a pretty management intensive strategy, it is going to be a little bit more expensive. But once you see the 16.53% trillion 12 month dividend yield, maybe that 1% plus expense ratio doesn't matter as much. And speaking of SVOL's dividends, they have actually paid a very consistent dividend. I can't even lie, I was looking into SVOL towards the end of last year, and I really thought to myself, this ETF has not been around long enough for me to really wanna buy into it, at least not with any significant amount of money. But as the months have gone on, and as this ETF has just consistently been paying pretty much right around 30 or 32 cents on a monthly basis, and considering the ETF is around $23 per share as of right now, and keep in mind I bought it even cheaper, I'm honestly pretty thrilled with the performance as of so far, and even if this ETF does decay a little bit from here, I'm still in the green personally, and I would definitely add some more shares to SVOL as an alternative portion of my portfolio and or for the investors out there that are looking for some income, SVOL or the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF is definitely an ETF to look into. Now, the last ETF that I would have for my higher yielding portfolio, if I was to make just a specific high yielding portfolio searching for income, is actually an ETF that I do hold throughout my portfolios as of right now, but right now as a small position. I'm talking about the Yieldmax Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF or TSLY. Now, by now, you guys are probably familiar with TSLY, the Yieldmax ETFs, but if you're not, basically TSLY uses synthetic cover calls and writes call options on Tesla the underlying. And with using options reference to the underlying Tesla stock, this ETF has been paying massive distributions at least so far this year. So much so that the current distribution rate as of right now is around 61.7%, which is insane. Now looking a little bit closer at some of the distributions when it comes to TSLY, we're looking at distributions as of recently at around 58 cents per share per month, 57 cents per share per month, 58 cents before then. And then even a few months back, there was months where this ETF was paying over a dollar distribution on a monthly basis. And keep in mind, TSLY is only at around 11 or $12 as it sits currently. Now TSLY, along with a lot of other cover call ETFs, does have some negatives. It does have some ETF price decay. And I do go into the reasoning why on other videos on my channel, so definitely check them out. But basically, when it comes to cover calls, there's less upside potential, but there is at times more downside potential, if that makes sense. But all in all, if I was to be building out a portfolio that once again is really focused on generating income, focused on generating income from day one, and if I was to pick three different ETFs as of this moment, the three ETFs that come to mind are without a doubt the JEPQ ETF, which we went through first, then SVOL, which we went through second, and then last but not least, I would have to add TSLY, the Yieldmax Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF, as number three, because let's be real here, there is just so much income potential to be earning. Now, keep in mind, referencing to what I said earlier, these three ETFs that we went through don't necessarily have the most upside potential as far as ETF price, but again, for those investors out there that are searching for income, these are three different ETFs to definitely look into. But now I want to hear from you guys down below when it comes to building a high yielding dividend portfolio. If you were to choose three different ETFs to build your own portfolio, which three would they be? Drop the tickers in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.